Good evening, and welcome back to WMLT News. I'm David Burnside. And I'm Josh Kerbway. With today's Go Green Society, many people are wondering if they can still have a festive lighting for the holiday. Josh Kerbway has more. Since 1882, Americans have used electric lights to show their holiday spirit. But now, in the 21st century, global warming and pollution, as well as the rising cost of electricity, may cause some Americans to turn out the lights on this festive tradition. If you look at electricity in West Virginia, it, it typically is about seven cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, and a kilowatt hour means 1,000 watts. You hear some people talk about uh, their light displays having 20,000 and 40,000 watts, or 40,000 uh, lamps, so that, that would equal 40,000 watts. Uh, that, that would uh, equate to a pretty healthy electric bill. But here at Jackie Withrow Hospital, this age-old tradition will continue to shine despite the cost. The lights have been on here for many years. It's kind of a tradition here in the Beckley area. I've only been here at the facility, this is my third year, but I know they've been for at least probably 10 plus years, if not longer. Well, last year we probably experienced maybe a $100 or so increase in what we paid on our uh, power bill. However, you know, we don't know how much of that was actually attributed to the weather, the conditions outside, as opposed to the actual lights. But to us, you know, just being able to provide that home-like environment for our residents and have the lights available for them, it, it offsets whatever cost we might see in our power bill. For those of you who wish to continue with this American tradition, there are ways to conserve energy and help the world stay green. There are some things that people can do to reduce that. Number one, reduce the, the, amount, the amount of lights they've got out there. Uh, number two, put it on a timer so it, it doesn't burn all night long. And uh, number three, move to a more energy efficient type lighting like LED, which drastically reduces, will help reduce by about uh, 40 to 50 percent the amount of lights that you need. Uh, they're brighter and they use less electricity. Uh, but you know, if the consumer is, is anxious about being able to pay their energy bills through the, through the, uh, through the holidays, then uh, you, you probably need to reduce the amount of lighting that you want to put out. Josh Kerbway, WMLT News, Beckley. Everyone has heard the saying, diamonds are a girl's best friend. This seems to be true not only in the United States, but also all the way in Hong Kong. A rare five carat pink diamond was auctioned off for a record $10.8 million. It is said no one has ever spent $2 million per carat. Although the diamond is not flawless, the vivid pink hue helps establish the diamond as being very rare. This pri price beat a record set 15 years ago on another jewel from Geneva, where a diamond weighing in around 19.7 carats was sold for $7.4 million. The recent purchase of the pink diamond will hopefully help out the world's rare and large stones market since the recent financial crisis. Christmas is known as a season of giving, and the Salvation Army is once again trying to do their part in making this a great Christmas for everyone. However, the people that usually donate their time and money are now those in need. Rachel Shelton has more. Thousands of people across the United States will be hearing this sound as thousands of Salvation Army volunteers ring bells in front of places of business during the holiday season. The money that is raised from donations helps fund the various services that the Salvation Army provides throughout the year. This sound is a symbol of hope for communities and families nationwide. Uh, we also have our Angel Tree program, which also starts this Friday, uh, where needy families come into the Salvation Army, they apply, um, for assistance, for toys. This year, the Salvation Army has seen a steep increase in the number of families requesting assistance. The only problem is the families who are usually donors are now those that need help themselves. Um, our food pantry uh, program is, um, is a very good program that the Salvation Army does. It meets basic needs of, uh, of feeding and we've seen over a hundred percent increase over last year. Uh, in new people who've never came into the Salvation Army before and uh, so in, you'll, you will see the pantry soon and you'll notice that it's very bare because we've been serving so many people. Not only does the Salvation Army provide food services, but they also provide assistance to families each year with their heating bills. 
I mean, last winter when um, the heating was so expensive and everything, they did help me pay for my heating bill, which helped out tremendously. Now that those who usually donate are the ones seeking assistance, it is time for other community members to help spread the holiday cheer. Volunteers are always needed, and if you are interested in helping the Salvation Army, check with your local chapter or go to www.salvationarmyusa.com to find out how you can help people in your area. In Princeton, I'm Rachel Shelton for WMLT. And for this week's Concord Minute, we have Rachel Lucas. Thanks, David. Concord's Phi Alpha Delta mock trial team was recently ranked third in the nation at the pre-law conference and mock trial competition in Alexandria, Virginia. Svetlana Olenich, PAD president, played a key role in the team's successes. The teams acted both as witnesses and attorneys and were assigned to simulate several realistic legal cases. The team is placed in the top four spot since 2004 and is expected to be a strong competitor in next year's match. Concord's theater department is receiving great reviews from their premiere and Miss Reardon drinks a little. The theater seats were filled and plans for another production in the spring are already underway. CUPD continues to expand its department by hiring its newest officer, Donald Ingram. CU Police Task Force is excited to run a tighter, safer shift as it continues to serve the campus beautiful. That's it for your Concord Minute. Now back to you at the desk. Stay tuned for the rest of WMLT and see what movie made fans wait in lines for hours at theaters nationwide. And with this week's sports news, we have Jamie Lee Record. Welcome back to WMLT News, and now with sports, we'll send it over to Jamie Lee Reichert. Concord basketball has started. Concord's men's basketball team played Bluefield, West Virginia over Thanksgiving break. On CUMountainLines.com, Coach Steve Cox was quoted saying, There are a lot of young guys and are trying to figure out what their roles are. Gentry Shrewsbury hit a leaner in the lane to put Concord up 23-19, to and Eric Bailey helped us in the lead with a pair of three-pointers before halftime. Of Concord's four double-digit scorers, three were freshmen. Damian Tunstall let all scorers with 17 points, and Eric Bailey added 15, and Gentry Shrewsbury 12. The fourth double-digit scorer was another newcomer, junior Marlon Cribs. Although playing over the holiday, Mountain Lions won 89-58, to making this season record so far 1-3. Our Lady Mountain Lions are starting on a good foot. They play Davis and Elkins on the 19th of November. Jaleesa Brown led all scorers with career-high 32 points. Sydney Lindsay also had a career-high with 22 points. Sierra Brown added 18 points, and Gamisha Alexander ended up with 10. The Lady Mountain Lions came out with another win, 92 to 81, making this their third win of the season. For more information on Concord Sports, please visit CUMountainLions.com West Virginia University is almost over with only one game left this season. They played Pitt winning 19-16. Their overall record was season is 8-3. Marshall ended their season with their last game Saturday against El Paso, Texas. They ended their season on a sad note losing 21-52. Their overall record of the season is 6-6. That's all for Concord Sports. See you next year. Back to you all at the desk. And for this week's Take It or Leave It, we have Emily Gallagher. The holiday season is always a time to watch some good cinema with friends and also bring the family together. If you're looking for a love triangle between werewolves, vampires, and humans, 
then Twilight Saga New Moon is right for you. This action-packed love story was sold out in many cities opening night, but only made it to number three on the highest grossing list. Not into love triangles? 2012 is action-packed from beginning to end. The movie features a geophysical investigating team that presents evidence of the destruction of our world. 2012 depicts a thrilling look at what catastrophic events may happen in just a few years. This may be your ticket if you want to worry about your future. For the family, The Blind Side is emotion provoking and comical. This movie is an inspirational film based on the true story of Michael Orr's struggle to the top of professional football. Actress Sandra Bullock's performance is said to be the best of her career. If you want something uplifting and heartwarming, then this is your ticket. That's all for take, take it or leave it. Now back to you at the desk. Quidditch is the intense sport played in all the Harry Potter books and movies. Some students on campus have been working hard to form a team and recreate their own version of the game. Angie Coons has more. Set, go! A new sport is taking flight on campus. Those who are serious Harry Potter fans may already know that Quidditch is becoming a popular activity for muggles at Concord. I spoke with Megan Nelson about the basic rules of this magical game. We fly on brooms, supposed to like in the, uh, in the great movies of Harry Potter. And um, well, there's two hoops like the one behind me, there's one on the other side of the field. There are three chasers, two beaters. The chasers have the quaffle. That's the one that's used to throw in the hoops and make the points. The beaters have, we use dodgeballs, hit people, they get knocked off the broom. Um, seekers chase the snitch, this guy in um, yellow tights running around. Catch him, you win the game. Uh, keeper is like the goalie. Quidditch is also bringing quite a few spectators to the valley. Students have been very supportive of this new sport. I think it's pretty, uh, it's very exciting. It's like Harry Potter come to life. I love watching it. It's, it's, it's great. It's hard to deny this is one of the most creative activities to come to school this year. If you are interested in playing or watching Quidditch, come to the Valley on Tuesday and Thursday evenings around 5 o'clock. Reporting from Concord, Angie Coons. I think it's great how they're bringing more creative sports here on campus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it looks like a lot of fun. I, I'm not too familiar with the game, but you know, from the movies, it looks like a great time. Well, this is David and my last show today. We've enjoyed our time here at WMLT and have many fond memories. And would like to thank William Bailey and the rest of the WMLT crew for all of their hard work. For Josh Kerbway and the rest of the WMLT crew, Goodbye and join us next semester. I'm David Burnson.